So over here I have a scene that I made recently. It is a fictional city depicting Japan. And it's something that looks completely different if you don't have post-processing. As um, I'm going to click right now. This is what my scene looks like without any post-processing uh, edits. And it looks completely different to, from what we saw previous. So we're going to fix that right now. You want to decide on the type of day you want your scene to be. Let's change things up and instead of having it um, look like it was early morning, let's make it close to mid uh, midday. So to do that, you would go right here to the sun settings and you would change the angle. This setting right here changes the how high the sun is. Obviously, if it's set to 90, it's going to be high noon directly pointed downwards. And the lower you go, the closer it is to sunset. This number changes the orientation of the sunlight. So you can see the shadows are being reflected differently. So let's actually have the sun coming from around down here and change it to uh, be a little bit closer to noon, like that. Okay, and now right here, the intensity. This is important. Right now, it's a little bit too dark. So you can increase this and you drag the slider to 100 and you can actually drag it even more if you go over here to this setting and change it manually to like 155. And now it's starting to be, be pretty bright and realistic. Uh, at the moment, the sky is just this foggy cube, and we don't want that for, for this scene. It might be different for other scenes, but for this one, I'm going to set it to this metal setting, which makes the sky more atmospheric. And now you can see it looks starting to look a lot different and much better. After you uh, do this, you can go to these three bars and turn these settings on. These settings uh, affect things like glass and uh, certain materials. So it uh, basically enables it to look, for instance, I have some water right here. If I have these turned off, it changes how the water looks. It has less reflections. So I'm gonna turn those on. And now over here to the exposure vignette settings, uh, under the camera setting, you can change how bright you want your scene to be, or if there is a vignette type of effect. And at the moment, it looks a little bit pixelated, and that's because of these settings up here. So this window changes your resolution. So you can set your, it to something more reasonable like that. And that increases not only the render window, but the resolution as well to make it higher in pixels. And you can even drag this out so it conserve, it preserves the uh, resolution you set, but it makes it even higher. So you can just drag this all the way up to the max. And this is the pixel sampling. So this dictates how um, this basically, the higher it goes, it reduces the noise. So you can drag this however you want. In fact, you, if you want it to be something super crazy, you can make it something very big like that. And it'll take a long time, obviously. But once it fully renders, it should be pretty crystal clear. So usually you would set these settings only when you're ready to take your final shot. Because obviously... You're not going to be waiting, say, 20 minutes just to see what, what your scene looks like. So at the moment, uh, I can just keep this like as is. Um, if you want to change, let's say, uh, the type of how bright or what color the light is, you can also go here and change it like that. You can see it's having a quite unrealistic effect. And uh, most suns do not look like this. So you want to keep it close to just like white, but if you want to do like some cool scenes, you can probably have it more like blue, bluish haze, haze like this.
I'm just going to decrease the um, angle on this to make it have a little more shadow so it looks somewhat more realistic because if you set it to like this it looks a little bit funky just with the uh, how voxels are in the edges so something like that is good if you want like better edges for like instance with these buildings you can turn this setting on display edges and that basically puts a outline over each voxel and you can configure that setting over here in this gear icon and drink, drag this down you can change how you want the width to be obviously if you make it too big like 0.5 it starts to little bit look like uh, borderlands and it looks kind of weird so i'm gonna bring it back down to like 0.5 just so we have some like nice edges you can also change the color too but i'm just gonna keep it at um, black which is a uh, default so let's go ahead and take a look at another example and see how we can use post processing to make that scene look better so i have everything set well, almost everything. Okay, now everything's set to what it would look like if you made no changes to the render window. After making the scene, you can see it looks quite bad. Like, this is supposed to be a cloud, and this is supposed to be fog, and it's rendered really poorly. So, let's apply what we did in the previous scene to this scene. So, first thing you want to do is make it a lot brighter and like before you can make this past 100 if you go to this clickable number right here and just change it you can actually make it like really big if you just type in a number that you think is too big magical voxel will just give you the max so it looks like the max here is 500 500 is way too bright for, for this scene at least um it could work in other scenes you have but i haven't used that yet so i'm just gonna set it to maybe like 155 and the next thing I want to do is turn on atmospheric scattering to make it more of a sky uh, kind of feel. And I'm going to make it pretty close to dusk. So I'm going to drag this one almost to zero. And I want to change the position of how the sun is being angled. Right now it's, it doesn't look that good. So I'm going to adjust this. Something like that make it even a little darker like that and now it you can't even see anything right now it looks pretty bad so let's go ahead and go to the camera icon increase the exposure and if you want to play with the vignette it will make the sides darker to make it pop a little more but as you can see if you make it more and more vignette like the circle of what you can see gets smaller and smaller so I want to advise making it too large. And you can see right here, these lights, there's no bloom on them. So to turn that on, you just press this play button and you can adjust the sizing of the bloom with these settings here. This is way too bright. So I'm gonna bring it down as well as the uh, mix. That looks pretty good. Now, to uh, get more depth from the clouds and the reflections in the materials, we want to go to these three bars and turn these on. Now you can see a couple things happening. One is that the light is being bounced off um, more objects. You can see there's like a bluish tinge that you're seeing on the wall and on the ground here. The clouds also have a more distinct cloud-like appearance, especially the fact that they're reflecting light from the sun that we've created. And other than that, um, you can even play with the aperture, which basically means the higher you go, the more in focus an object that you click on will be. So let's say I want to focus on this, you click on it. And if the aperture is set to 100, everything that isn't around what you clicked on will be out of focus to give it a tilt shift effect. So if you put this to like something really low, 
um, the surrounding objects will be less in focus would be more in focus than um, if you were to have this higher. And this depth of field icon, if you click on it, it'll lock it. So if I was to move my camera around like this, the depth of field makes it so the um, focus will retain on this, regardless of how far I zoom out or zoom in and move the camera. And like I said before, depending on your scene and the complexity of the shaders and materials, it could take a while to load even with the default settings. So before you start changing these values to something like 1080 by 1080 and the sampling to something really high, if you're still making edits to your scene, you don't want to have your GPU do unnecessary work and probably take like five minutes to load something. So you want to keep things like pretty small. But other than that, um, I hope this tutorial has helped and I'll catch you guys in the next one.